Hello, thank you for joining Hiding Behind the Lipstick 3.0 Ministry. I am Ophelia Waters, your host, and the Lord has laid upon my heart of recent to speak with you regarding the subject of marriage. And I also want to invite you to visit our website at Hiding Behind the Lipstick, L I P S T I X dot com, and to join us with comments on Facebook. And again, welcome to our broadcast. The Sacred Vows of Matrimony. What does it really mean to be married? Are you happy and fulfilled or are you merely going through the motions and hiding behind the lipstick? I am convinced that there are many of couples that are in relationships just to say that I'm married. Now, the word matrimony means the state of being married. Wedlock, union, nuptials, the state of being married. What is the sacrament of marriage? It is the covenant by which a man and a woman establish between themselves a partnership of their whole life and in order by its nature to the good of the spouses and the procreation and education of their offsprings. This is what the Catholic Church calls marriage. Now, holy matrimony is the phrase that Christians use to describe marriage, which was instituted and ordained by God for the lifelong relationship between one man as the husband, one woman as the wife. They consider it the most intimate of human relationships a gift from God and a sacred institution. But the Bible says that a marriage is a covenant, a sacred bond between a man and a woman instituted and publicly entered into before God. The sacrament of marriage simply means being subject one to another in the fear of Christ. A man and a woman that enters into a marriage are entering into a covenant with each other with the promise to another before God and all of the witnesses that they will love each other and that they will give themselves to each other as long as they live. This promise is a vow. It is a vow to God first and it is a vow to the person that you now stand at the altar with. Well, what has happened? Why are you hiding behind the lipstick? What happened to the commitment? What has happened to the sacrament of marriage in the lives of the married couples? The word sacrament means a religious ceremony or act of the Christian church that is regarded as an outward and visible sign of inward and spiritual divine grace. See, this is serious. This sacrament is a pledge before God. Therefore, not to be entered into lightly or unadvisably, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. How many marriages have you seen that was not it? where God was not even invited to the ceremony, nevertheless was he invited into their home, to their marriage, to their union, or to their nuptials. When one, mar when one marries, and it is an outward sign in the human world of the presence of God in the home, in the marriage, and in the family. The church of God, as we know and receive it, should require these recipients of matrimony to meet certain conditions. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In order for the sacrament to be valid, the persons that are entering into the vows must be capable of entering into the vows. Which means that they are both able and they are willing to fulfill every vow that is made to each other and to God. Marriage is really serious business, not to be entered into lightly, 
They also must be mentally capable and emotionally able to make the commitment that is required in the vows. See, the wedding vows go on long after the ceremony, the reception, the cocktail hour, the first dance. All of that goes on. It, marriage goes on after that ends. After all of that is over, after you come back from the honeymoon, the marriage is on. Each person must be free to enter into the covenant of marriage, which means not to be married to someone else. Both persons must have the intent to live out what they have promised or vowed to do. Let me say that again. Both persons must have the intent to live out what they have promised or vowed to do. Must have the right intent. Unity. To love the other. Be one in mind, body, and spirit. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 24, it is simply put, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Real marriage, not fake marriages, in name only, not those kind. Just for the eyes of the public, not the kind. Real marriages. While you pretend to be married all the time, hiding behind the lipstick of unhappiness, you're hiding behind the lipstick of misery, and you're hiding behind the lipstick of abuse. Faking. Marriage is a part of the common grace that God has given to all mankind. This grace is like the sun and the rain that falls on the just and the unjust, as stated in Matthew 5 and 45. But if you are struggling in areas of your marriage that are not conducive to the vows you made, and God is not getting glory from your marriage, my suggestion is for you to take or revisit the reason that you were married at the first. Check out the underlying motive. What was your motive? Was it for stature? Was it for finance? Was it for power? Was it for revenge? What, why are you married? Or was it for the love of the person that you married? And please remember that our marriage can only reach its full potential through Jesus Christ. A healthy, loving marriage is vital to the survival of a healthy family. Remember that God instituted marriage in the Garden of Eden. It is sacred, therefore it should not be entered into lightly. And I pray that God will touch your marriage, that he would heal any areas of your marriage that are not where they should be. And I ask God to touch it right now and to bless your family and to set you free from anything that is not like him. Thank you for listening to our broadcast today. And remember, post your comments and let me hear from you on Facebook, on Twitter, and you can watch on YouTube. But most of all, go to the website, www.com, excuse me, www dot hiding behind the lipstick l i p s t i x dot com and leave your comments there send in your prayer requests i look forward to hearing from you until next time have a blessed day